mai kako. Welcome to Puanakike Spring Lecture Series. Um, our guest lecturer for this evening is Clarence Aku Hawaniyo, born and raised in Kalapana. His mother was Elizabeth Kiliiho Omalu, married to his father, John Hawaniyo, also born and raised in Kalapana. His father and grandpa grew up at the ocean, if not throwing net, diving, aama gathering, pounding opihi, and the style of fishing, kaulaau, or ma'ama'a. He grew up the same way, always at the beach and going holo holo. Kaulaau was passed down from generations in the Kalapana area, and today, is tr today he is trying to pass it on to those interested in learning this style of fishing. The ulua fish is legendary in Hawaiian culture. The largest ulua caught in recent times weighed an astounding 191 pounds. While modern ulua fishing equipment and tournaments pull countless fish from the sea each year, some Hawaiians are revisiting the traditions of their ancestors for more sustainable fishing practices. Please help me in welcoming Aku Hawaniyo, traditional Hawaiian kaulaau fisherman, as he shares his wisdom and practice of early cliff top fishing known as hang baiting. Aloha. Aloha. Um, like she said, um, I was born in Kalapana, born and raised down in the Kalapana area, and now it's all gone by lava flow. But um, my heart still belongs down there. And then I'll never forget that area. You know, I was born and I went to school in Kalapana. Kalapana had one school. I started going to school uh, kindergarten down in Kalapana. And I uh, went from kindergarten to fifth grade in Kalapana school and had only five students. <laughs> when I was fifth grade. And uh, I was myself, um, Trudy Ka'apana, which is the Ohana Serenaders, and her sister, Rhoda Ka'apana, and Michael Aina, and Betty Sweezy. So it was the, just the five students was going there, and they, they ended up closing the school down because there was only five of us, and we ended up going for high school. But it was nice growing up over there, and um, uh, when I grew up, uh, I ended up going into the military. And uh, when I came back um, out of the military, um, I came home and there was nothing for everybody to do down there. And uh, I started a canoe club down, down in Kalapana in 1976 and got everybody together to paddle out there. And, uh, and um, you know, my dad was still along, around and uh, went with him. You know, I did call out younger, but you know, when, you, when you're young, uh, they don't like take you holo holo. You know, and they're like, when you're a young, young kid, they like you, you know, young kids, they like walla out too much and they like make noise. Yeah. <laughs> so when you make noise too much, they leave you home. <laughs> so when you grow up a little older, then they'll bring you out. You know, they had so much rules in this style of fishing. Call out. And, uh, you know, it's like you step over the rope. I mean, I know I'm going to broke some of the rules already tonight, but I'll go broke them just for you guys. But if my dad and my grandpa was here, oh. <laughs> Either the ear gonna get like this, or coil up everything and go home. As, 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 some, as some, they were, it was real strict. But anyway, my fishing pole right here, um, everybody's like, oh, how do you even hold that by the cliff for fish? No, it's, I'm not gonna hold them up. <laughs> I can stick the back end of my uh, fishing pole into like a crack along the, uh, on the cliffs, and you can start from like one 10 feet up to 30 feet cliff. You can do like maybe 10, 15 feet off the, the cliff edge, find a crack. And uh, the way I set my pole up is um, I use these ropes. And I stand the pole up and I hold the, the whole pole up in the air with this rope right here because that's the only thing you get to guide the tip over there. And then, but you need three people to put this in. One person or two people holding the end and try to guide them into the crack. And I just learned this thing down until the thing is like on the same angle when we put them on the cliffs. Put a rock on the front and we try to put boulders on the end because when the ulu will come in and, and bite that hook, oh, he gonna move this thick. <laughs> you know, the ulu, you know, it's all depend how you got them in. Uh, because a lot of times we get cliffs with like inlets, the ulu will come from the side and you hit your hook from the side, guarantee your pole is gonna move sideways like this. So you want to make sure that everything is solid over there. 
And um, you notice the um, Akua will give me this stick. I will and cut this stick and usually there's a wire up here. And uh, I usually put one rope on the end of the wire. But this thing will end up going back together. And so everybody tell me, oh, you didn't make them like that. I was like, no, Akua will make them for me, not me. The thing was like 50 feet in the air in Kano and, and that's what I didn't get. So I was blessed with this thing. So, you know, I go to Oahu for the fishing expo and they're like, oh, you should leave your stick over here. I was like, no, not this one. <laughs> I was like, I'll give you an auto over there. i send you an auto on over there. But, yeah, this is my good stick here. And, uh, like I said, Ohio. And when we cut them down, we go in the forest. And a, a lot of places where you can find long ones like this is uh, where there's big trees that, that's covering all over here. And the Ohio tree try to go and fight for the sun. And that's where you find a lot of these, these nice little here stick like this. And a lot of times when you look from the outside, you know, from a distance, you're like, oh, yeah, look that nice one. But then when you get underneath and you look around, you're like, oh, this thing don't look so good. <laughs> so you just keep moving. You know, take time for find one fishing pole like this. You know, you drive down the road, you look, oh, right there. Oh, no, no good. <laughs> so, yeah. And then uh, we just cut them down, take them out, we debark the whole thing. Uh, take all the bark off and you don't want to leave them outside in the rain because in the sun in the rain the thing end up cracking the whole thing out Make them all crack so that's the best place to do is to put them under your house and let them dry under the house And then <clears throat> my line um, They don't sell a cotton line over here. You lay the, the like in the old days the, I guess they used to use um, you know like uh, Olona and um, um, uh, Coconut and I know there's some people who's using Akia and stuff like that. But when my dad was fishing, he was using the, the cotton line. And uh, back then it was called Aho. And, um, and we used to take the line and, um, and get the bark from the kukui, the kukui tree. We get the, the old kukui trees and you, you just take the bark off the roots. And then you take them home and you pound them, pound them. And uh, so I get some stuff over here. You, use this for, you can pound kukui with this, I use this for pound palo. But we pound the kukui, make them small, the, the bark, and then we boil them with the salt water. And uh, you boil them, and then the more you boil them, the more dark the dye would come. And will come like this, and even darker. Um, this, this line right here, it was dyed with kukui. <coughs> this one here was dyed with kukui. Um, Makes them real nice. And I remember back in the old days, even the, the lashing for the canoes, you know, was all done with kukui too, same thing. And make them last longer too, the kukui bark. And um, the rig, uh, on how, how I set up my rig on this, this kaulao is, um, you gotta know the ties. Yeah? I was talking about how the stick, when the ulu will come and he hit them from the side or he grab them from the bottom. Um, this thing here is the main one on your, your whole thing, how to tie them down there. Because uh, you got to know the knot. Yeah, it's the double half inch. It's just over. It's like this. This is a double half inch. And then you can go, you can go one more time, triple. This is what's going to, that's what's going to hold the fish from, from running away over here. Because when you put this double half inch over here, and then all you do is just take this top line. This is the top line. And as the line going, she drop that one. <coughs> this is the line that's going to bring the fish out. This one right here. And so this line, you just tie on like a shoe, shoelace, just like how you tie your shoes. This time like it's real simple. But you know, when a fish bite over there, the only thing that the thing going to do is just only make the tip go like this. The thing not even going to do nothing. This thing not even going to no place. Wow, oh, really. And this other side here is, the, is for the bottom. The bottom line. And the bottom line, this, the way this my stick work, um, it's like a pulley. So when a, the fish bite, this is the line that, <coughs> that, 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 that goes down. And then when the fish bite, if you want to bring them in, it's the, you just pull this bottom line. 
And so this thing come right up to you. <laughs> See the Hawaiians were smart, eh, back then. <laughs> they never go to college, you know, but they must have learned them from someplace. <laughs> but yeah, and then when you put them back out again, you do the same thing, just pull this thing out, and then you just drop them, and then you tie them back the same way again. You do have a 200 pound fish on you? Uh, no, when you catch on, I swear you got to watch what's going on uh, down there, you know. And I saw when I pump my palu, uh, my charm, I usually see right close to the pole. I, I see on, on one end where I can see right on the bottom. And uh, I can see the fish coming in. And if not, you know, I mean, the video I get that I'm going to play, it says, you know, when you pound the palu, yeah, you can feel the palu. When the palu come warm, that means the ulua stay around. And you don't need to even see them. You just feel the power, you go, oh, somebody stay home. <laughs> and, uh, and then you just be ready for grab, grab the line, if anything. But when 100 pound will look at this thing and hold them, 100 pound. Because I caught a couple hundred pounders and the thing only go like this. You know, but I know a lot of people use um, uh, YV, you know, like the strawberry guava one. And that's good too, but the thing bend too much, the YV. You know, you, when you grab one, you go like this, oh, the thing really bends, but not this one. This one can handle. And then when I set my hook, you know, I mean, I usually get my hook above the ground. And in the ocean, it's the same way too. You like them like a, about one foot above the ground, your hook, above the water. Because when the ulua come by your hook, you know, if you got them inside the water, the strongest part of the fish is the tail. And when you get them down into the water, the fish come over there. The first thing the ulua does, he comes up, he grabs the, the bait. And the first thing he do is go straight down. Mm -hmm. And once the tail get under the water, everything going, snapping. <laughs> so that's how we put the hook above the water. And so every time when he come up for bite the hook, you watch him, he come up, he bite him. So then as he turn around, the thing end up going like this. Every time he let go down, he end up going like this. So then you hear him blow. <laughs> That means you, you tire them all of a sudden. 30 seconds, you can get them on the land or whatever by you. <coughs> That's how fast. Yeah. And then, um, you know, we use, we use eel is what we use for bait. Um, the white eel is like the best. The tohe, they call them tohe, we call them wa. You know, people, everybody gets different names for that stuff. But the white eel is the best. And uh, my dad, and my grandpa used to say, you know, when you get the toe here, they get stripes on the thing, yeah? Um, and we cut the eel in half. Like if you get like one three feet eel, you cut them right in half. And, uh, <coughs> and the, the tail part is what goes on the hook. That's what we use. And I know people use, you know, they get, people get different way of using them. But we don't put them on a grill or anything. We just use them just like that. We just take the, the, the tail and uh, we have one, like one long skinny knife and we take the bone out from in the middle. Because with the bone in a thing, <coughs> it's going to be real stiff, the tail. So we take the, the bone out, we get one knife, we just go down inside around the bone. We just keep turning the ear, we just keep cutting, cutting, cutting. And then we just take the bone out and then we stick the whole tail in the hook. Stick them down like this. Bring them up, and we bring them above the hook like this. But before we do that, you know, the top of the tail get meat to, with the skin. <coughs> with the same stone, get the stone, we pound, pound, pound the top part. Get the meat off, yeah? Once we get the meat off, we just get one knife, we just cut like some slits in the thing, and then the, 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 the skin gonna come like this on the top. And then we just sew the top and we wrap them. Because if you don't wrap them, what's going to happen? The tail going to come stiff like having the bone inside. And so you like the, the tail be real nice and soft. So when you drop them in the water, the thing is like this. <laughs> and that's what, that's what attracts the fish is the tail. You know, the tail can be this way on the water when, when the waves, when the surge come inside and it gets the, gets the hook and the hook swing like this. Oh, the fish love that when they see the tail bouncing on the water. It bounces on the water like this. Every time the thing, you know, it just bounces on the water and that's, that's what really attracts the fish. And, uh, you know, when you go down you, to the beach and uh, 
find a place to to do this color all you need to uh, find one one area where you get curry inside white water on the bottom a lot of white water because that's where the fish they're gonna kind of feed in the white water yeah and uh, if you see one place with white water the thing gotta have current inside there too so if you're not sure if there's currents in there, you just can get one small coconut or something, one little stick and throw them in there and, and just watch them. Because <coughs> uh, if the current's not in there, then when you pound palo, you know, when you chum the water, the, the chum's not going to go anywhere. It's just going to stay right in there. And so nothing will come around for bite your, your hoop if the thing just stays in a circle right there. You need current in there to take the, the, the smell out that way or that way. And that's what's going to bring the fish from far. They're just going to come up, they hit the smell, and they're just going to keep coming and looking for this, the bait. And a lot of times when we, <coughs> the head part is what we use to charm the water, yeah? We get the, um, the head part is, is filleted from the bottom of the mouth all the way to the center. We fillet them open and we open them up like this. And this rope right here is what? I used to tie up the, tie up the eel, and um, we just put a slit on the back of the, right in the middle part, and, uh, and you just pound. You see it on, right next to the, the pole, or on, the, on, the, on one other side, nice area. Well, you gotta find a good area because you might end up pounding for 10 hours. <laughs> and you know, when we did this video, oh, we spent some time down there, you know, we got four o'clock in the morning, hike out there, set up the pole, we pound, pound. 10 hours, we go home, we eat, sleep, next day back out there. But you know, before we did the video, you know, I told them, oh, we're not gonna catch. They're like, why? I was like, you know, back in the old days there when I used to be my dad, guys. Every time when you point at the fish, you know, the fish know what's going on. And, uh, I took my friend one time and uh, we were just standing on a, on a cliff and we were looking and I go, oh, how are they old ones? She go, well, I was like, right down. I go, what's this fish? She go, what? I go, I go point at him. So I just didn't point at him. Oh, the thing went just like, like I went mean, touch him. He just went like that. She go, oh, how do you do that? I go, that's just how the old days used to be. You know, you know, point? You know, my, my grandfather and my dad guys, they had regulations where, you know, no step on the line. No lie down, no talking, you know, a lot of, everything was just, you just observe. No talking, you just look and shut your mouth and just learn from that. That's what it was back in the old days. And so anyway, you pound, you follow them, you just throw them in the water right there, pull them up, pound, throw them in the water, pull them up. And you just kind of like, when you bring them up, you just like, just bring them up like that, and put them back down on the ground, and you just pull them from me and pull them up. That's all you do all day. And you just watch and see, you know, you feel the follow, get warm, boom, something coming. And then you just be ready for this thing to go off. And if not, you just keep pounding follow. <laughs> and uh, hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's all fishing. <laughs> and um, the other side of that, uh, that um, we're talking about was the um, the ma, ma which is uh, this style. See, that is the tall owl that one down, or hang stick. And um, you know, we use this hang stick. You can bring this one too. It's the the ma 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 ma, or they call them cowboy because it's like lastling the cow with this thing here. <laughs> you swing them around like this, and you cast them in the ocean. And a lot of times, you know, when you get one ulua come and he will bite this hook before, he not gonna come back and bite him again. You know, he gonna come back and he gonna chase the other ulua that like come bite that. He gonna chase him away. So when you see that ulua doing that, then you bust this one out. <laughs> Cause he never see this one. <laughs> now, Cause I get this, I'm gonna hook you up now. <laughs> But yeah, you get this, the setup on this one is the same. Uh, you put the puhi on here the same way. Uh, pound them, tie them above the line, and then you just swing them like on, like on the wrestling rope like this. And uh, on the video that we have tonight, um, you get my uncle doing them. You know, but this stuff, this one here is, 
real rough, this one here. You gotta be ready for the Ulua Bailam. Because you can fly in the ocean if you die. <laughs> you gotta be ready for get wet. <laughs> so, um, during the day, it's good for that one and, and, uh, and this one. But when you, if you go nighttime, that one there more better. <laughs> more reliable because then you gotta go swimming. <laughs> and, um, and then uh, what we do first is we go catch eel. You know, we get little hooks like this. We, um, we go throw a net, uh, catch little fish. And then we go into the small, the areas we get little boulders here and there. And some, some places you get uh, eels, but like you go, pohi, you go pohiki the eels all around the way over there. They, they, they eel over there now. <laughs> oh, they know, too much people here. And, uh, but I, I remember one time I came over here in corner. Oh, it's infested over here with Pohi. <laughs> oh, I'm going to be in the church. My friend was living down, right down the road over here. He said, oh, Uncle, come away. Come catch Pohi. Oh, it was just crawling away. It was, it's crazy. But I caught them, some eels from here and I took them home. But um, what we do is we just chum the water, you know, just with the fish. Just pound the head a little bit. Take fillet them, take some meat, and we just put them on the hook. And uh, when you see the eel, all you do is just get the hook, you stick them on a stick like this. And you just put them right by the eel's mouth. You know, if the eel's over there, like by your slipper, you got a long stick from here, you just poke them over there. And I think just come out and, and, and grab the bait. <laughs> and the eel, you know, like drag them because if, if you pull them, the thing going to hunt out a rock underneath. So the thing to do is just. You gotta be ready. Everybody running away when you start swinging. <laughs> and you bring all of that and you swing out and you're at the ground. But that's, that's the way you gotta do them because uh, when you bring them out clean like that, they put no more chance for biting his body. A lot of times when you, when you pull them, they hunt apart, they start biting themselves. Because when they get scars on the, on the tail like that, the Ulu are not gonna bite them. So more better you just show them away that one or use them for palu. So, you know, all those, those scars on the tails and stuff like that. The fish went college. They're smart. They know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it's, I, I mean, you can use one scarred tail and you can be over there all day and if you get fish on it, he's not going to buy them. But as soon as you change the tail and put one goat on, boom, wow. slam them. And, uh, yeah, they're kind of real particular, the, the Ulua. They know what's going on. So, <coughs> and like I said, we use the white, the white eel. And uh, the hooks, we get all kinds of different kinds of hooks over here. This is the American one. Oh, no, no, that's not. That one right there, we use that for, for instance. I just bought this. I had to go to America, Pennsylvania to get these big hooks like this. And uh, they don't sell these. You go in the store over here, they go, oh, bro, what are you going to catch me with me? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I ordered this through the mail. And, uh, but you, you see how the bend in this hook get? I mean, it's offset. It's, it's a good hook. I know it's nothing yet, but one day. But um, you see how the round in this, this hook right here? You know, my dad say, um, when the Ulua bite the hook, you know, the thing you plan to play in the hook, you know, when he struggle. So the, hook, the, the fish go up and down the hook. And as I open, yeah. But this is this is the shape of one of my dad's hook. And my dad made his hook with the, the horse file, you know, the rasp. That's what he used to make his his hook. But this one here, I just didn't make them, you know. This used any kind, yeah. But the, the old people they, they had the the right stuff. But this hook you know, corner, you know, you can you can tell right here is the low spot. So he said the Uluwa can bite these, boom, he struggled. His, the thing that going up here, everything is up here, yeah? This one here is like, you know, you're playing a play, so he just going to play all around in here. Either the thing going to come out or going to broke the jaw. But this is not going to come out because of this corner right here. Just, as soon as the, the thing slide down in this corner, he's just going to lock them right in the corner right there. Um... Um, so, um, I just have a video, uh, a DVD, enough talking, I think. Uh. <laughs>
<laughs> and then after the video, um, I just gonna have uh, if you if you folks have any questions or anything that I can answer, I might not be able to answer some of your questions, but um, I can answer the questions if you guys have after the 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 DVD. Hawaiian traditions live by being passed from one generation to the next. Today, the Haunio family of Kalapana are passing on their fishing traditions to the next generation. One of them is a technique that they call kau la'au, or hang stick, used for catching ulua, a large predatory fish of Hawaii. At a cliff above the ocean, a heavy line with a hook baited with an eel tail is hung from an ohia pole down to the waves below. The eel is also pounded for chum to attract the ulua. Today, this technique is nearly lost. A few native Hawaiians in Puna on the island of Hawaii, locally known as the Big Island, are the only ones known to still catch ulua this way even though the technique was formerly known as far as Niho. Kaula'o has been passed down through three generations of the Haunio family, all born and raised in Kalapanna. Ben Haunio, born in 1928, Ben's nephew Aku, born in 1952, and Aku's son Kainoa, born in 1980. Oh, I learned fishing from, from my father's sea. And at times, he don't uh, show me, but uh, I also, uh, as a big boy, when he catch fish, well, I, I just follow him with the bag. Throw net, take out all the fish, put it in the bag, and then I just follow my dad. And at the same time, I watch the places where he throw it, what kind of fish he catch. I used to go fishing with my dad too, the same thing like my uncle. Uh, learn all my fishing to being the bag boy. I guess everybody learned being bag boy, carrying around the bag and taking the fish out of the net. And same thing, seeing all the different holes where my dad used to throw his net. And then you learn that on the longer run when you grow up, you know, every time when you go there, you get a hole here, a holy holy hole here, more hole over there. Aku's father, John Haunio, was a ranger in Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, just west of Kalapana. Like many Kalapana Hawaiians, he often went fishing in the park. I know my dad fish ulua uh, in, at Apua, in Keho, in the park. And I know, you know, there was a lot of fish. And I went with him, you know, at Keho, and we caught like five uluas in like, Half an hour. Just as Ben and Aku learned to fish by watching their fathers, Aku has been passing on the traditional ways to his son, Kainoa. Well, when he was uh, like six years old, I used to take him out, take him hunting, and then showing him how to throw a net, uh, showing him all the different spots of throwing, uh, areas where he can throw. And that's the same way I learned, you know, from my dad, you know, when he throw, I just look and I watch. And then, you know, as I grew up, I would go over there and throw, you know, and like, hey, all right, I score, you know, and, and, and that's the same thing. I just try to teach my kids that way in the years to come, you know, at least if he have kids, he can show them the same thing that I showed them, you know, and I'll just keep carrying on the, you know, the family tradition of, of hunting, throwing that, catching ulua catching puhi, diving, all these different stuff where you can live off the ocean, live off the mountain. In 1990, life changed radically for the people of Kalapana. The village was covered by lava from Kilauea volcano. The people were forced to move elsewhere, and it became difficult for them to pass on their traditions of land and sea. The local spots for Kaula'au were destroyed. 
Now the Kalapana fishermen have to go west into Hawaii Volcanoes National Park to hang stick. Ulua is a large, aggressive predator fish. Using the kaula'au technique, Kalapana Hawaiians targeted the largest ulua, those weighing 60 to 100 pounds or more. One fish provided enough meat to share around the village. The technique the Haunios use today is essentially traditional. Although handmade steel hooks have replaced the original bone hooks, and cotton line has replaced the line made of olona or senet. Because the ulua put up such a fierce battle, a strong but flexible pole is required. The traditional pole used for kaula'au is an ohia pole. Like three inches or four inches on the bottom would be fairly a good size. Um, and then tapering off to like maybe, maybe two inches or inch and a half or something on the tip. Today, Ben and Aku are going out in search of an ohia tree from which they will make a new pole. They are looking for an ohia tree that is fairly straight and has a fork at the top. You can drive along the road and look in the forest and, and see one tree from the roadside and look, oh yeah, it's a nice tree, but then when you walk in there and go underneath the tree and you look up, oh, you go and bend. You, you might be able to find, you know, the, the amana on them, the Y at the top, because you need that Y for the rope to go in between you to hang. If not, the thing would just fall off. You debark them right there and um, you usually bring them home and just put them underneath the house and let them dry in the shade instead of leaving them out in the sun because a lot of times they kind of crack up real fast in the sun but you just put them under the house and dry them up. Once the pole has been peeled and properly seasoned, attention is focused on the fishing line. Traditionally, the line was made from fibrous coconut husks or the inner bark of olona. Today, a cotton line is used, but it is still treated with a dye made from the bark of a kukui tree. Well, as far as for all kukui tree, and the bark is uh, thick and it's more darker. So that's why the old folks also look for the old trees. Nice. And um, just bring the kukui bark home and you pound them, pound all the kukui bark, try to smash them as small as you can. And then um, then you just put them in a, in a salt water and you, you boil it up and you just let it boil. And the longer you let them boil, the darker the dye would come. Because if you don't dye it and your line is white, the fish they see them, they can see it. So that's why a lot of old folks dye their line. They keep them dark so you cannot, the fish cannot see them. Well, the next morning, we usually stretch the line, um, let, it, let it drip, and then uh, before the thing gets dry, you, you stretch the line out. Stretch it out real tight so when the thing dry out, um, when you coil it up, the thing won't kink the line if you stretch them. Stretch them out and let it dry. The fishermen catch puhi, eels, both for baiting the hook and for pounding, to make palu for chum, to attract the alua to the shoreline. To catch the eel, uh, you have to go throw net and then catch a light bait. You have to scale them, scale them all up, and you stay with a shallow water and put your fish over there. Put them on the gut and you just squish them all up, shake them in the water. Then all of a sudden, you see the eel coming out from the rocks. Right where you're sitting, you're sitting like this, and you just clean your fish come under your leg, <laughs> come on this side, come this side, come in the front of you, wow! <laughs> All you do is just hold your fish up. 
definitely grab your line, uh, sharp piece of line with the hook on them. So the fish belly, you just put them on the hook and then you just hold your line and you just feed them. And all of a sudden, it comes right out and you just turn around and you swing them. One time, two times, just to knock them out. Once you knock out, you grab one rock, you just hit them on the head, squash them on the head. Then he's dead already. You just take off the hook and just put them on the side. Go for another one. <laughs> you get two, three, it's good enough. Get a couple of different type of eels that that uh, we use. We get the um, the uha, which is the white ones. Um, those ones are like the best ones you can use, and um, they get the the wella and the kapa, the different the white spotted, brown spot one, and the, the brownish with a like greenish color on them is the wella. Those are good eels you can use. The entire eel is used for kaula'au. The bottom half of the eel is sewn onto the hook, and the top half is prepared for chum. Almost halfway of the eel, you cut them in half. In the tail part, you take a knife, and you just kind of cut the bone, the center bone out of there, so the thing get more flex on the tail when you take the bone out. If you leave the bone in, and you try to weave it down the hook, the tail get real stiff because of the bone in there. And you pound the top part of the, where you put, cut the tail off, and then you just kind of um, take the meat out of that top part, and then you just weave them down the hook. And then that top part, you just tie it around the line above the knot. And then the head part, we just kind of, from the, the bottom of the mouth, we just kind of fillet it down, open it up, and then make a hole in there, just stick a rope in there, and just tie it up, and just pound the head part. Another practice of traditional Hawaiian fishing is not to talk about the fishing plans before you leave. And then a lot of times when you go, you know, you usually say holo holo, yeah? When you go, any place you go, you go mountain, you go makai, you always say holo holo. Like, just like when you go catch puhi or ama crab, like that. It's, it's the same thing, you know, you don't want to talk about what you're going to do, yeah? You just, ah, I go holo holo. With all the preparations completed the night before, the fishermen rise before dawn and head down to the coast. Selecting the right fishing site is very important. The first thing when you when you get to a spot where you're gonna uh, do the hang stick, you uh, you kind of go over there and make sure uh, on the inside there's white water and uh, there's current inside. Because and how you can find out if there's a current that's going, you just like find a stick or coconut on the ground, you just throw them in the ocean, you just watch, and you, you see the current, the, just take the coconut and start going, and you go, oh yeah, this place, good place. Whatever you throw in the water just stays right in that area. Then, you know, if you charm in the water, you know, nothing's gonna smell anything unless they're cruising by, it just so happen to smell Apollo, and then they're gonna come, but other than that, you know, if there's a fish swimming down there or something, he's not gonna smell. You can be charming all day and if the pollen's still right there. It's gotta be a little bit, little bit shaky the ocean. Not real flat, it's gotta be kind of shaky. And, uh, and I like to do them like, uh, like if the, the high tide is gonna be around 10 or noon or something, I like to do them first thing in the morning to just charm the water so by the time Come around noon already, you know, the fish, plenty Palu's going out, you know, the charm's going out, and they're all coming, they're feeding, and uh, that's the way I like to do when the tide's coming up. And you just find a spot in the, like right on the edge of the cliff or kind of far back where you can stick the, the butt of the ohia stick inside the, in a crack and then like pile rocks around them so when the fish hit them, the stick won't move side to side. You know, and you prop another stone in the front so the thing can just, you know, fight them just straight up and down instead of sideways like that. Then you set your hook and your eel and everything, and uh, when you set them in the water, you just leave your hook above the water. So the only time the hook goes in the water is when a when swell comes in, then the hook would go in the water and then come back out of the water again.
And then you just got another spot on the side where you, you use the head part of the eel to pound and then just to throw it in just to charm, bring it up, pound, throw it in to charm, bring it up, like that. It's a messy job, pound palo. Because every time when you pound all the pieces all get on you, get on your clothes, uh, you cannot help it. You go fishing, you want to go, you want to go for those uh, big game fishing, you have to you know, go through that. You got to get patient, you have to, so you got to have patience, stay there, pound, pound, <coughs> throw it inside, pull it out, you watch the bait, all the bait goes straight out, you know the water is okay, the current is all right, you keep pounding. As soon as or later, maybe it takes you about half an hour, and you can feel the bait. When the bait comes warm, you just keep on pounding, pounding. My dad used to say, if you pound the palo, you know, a lot of times when you feel the palo and you're pounding, if the thing is warm, you know something's coming around, something's around down below. So you just look and you see them, you know, you can see them inside. Because every time when you keep charming, pulling them up, you feel in the, the palo every time you throw. And then you can feel a difference in the coldness sometimes. When the thing get a little bit too cold than, than what it is, they say it jaws, there's sharks around. If the hang stick isn't working, or if there's an extra person around, a single handline system is sometimes used, called ma'a ma'a, or cowboy style. You know, sometimes the fish come and he bite the hang stick line. And then when they come around, sometimes they don't bite the hang stick line because they already been buying them before. Awa. Call it awa. And that? second, they bite hook already. Then they, if other fish come in, that fish already been get caught. It's going to chase these other ones away. That's why I use the ma ma and kau lau hang stick. Use two. When, when that line go, you hear that line whistle in your hand. That's how fast that fish is pulling. Your line get tangled, you gonna get, you gonna get all, <laughs> all that line gonna go in the water. See, so that's why I separate all my pile. In case the fish grab on the hook and pulls out, if you get them in one whole bunch, it's gonna get all tangled, and your, all your line gonna go out. There are many conditions and rules that have been passed down by Hawaiian fishermen. Some are now ignored, but others are strictly adhered to. When the old folks go, they don't take nothing. Not even water, nothing. Not even eat at home. They just go. And then, um, you know, when you get down there, you know, they say, oh, you don't point at the fish, you know, and the fish come around, you know. Because a lot of people, they get all excited and they start pointing. Oh, there, there, there. And that's the worst. It's the worst thing. And then stepping over the line is another thing. And then laying down when you go down the beach. Because this, my father used to say, oh, when you lay down, the fish get tired too. You know, come bite. So, you know, it's all the different things that. And they say about when you go down there. If you like lay down, go home and go lie down. You know, come down to the beach and come lie down over there. You can stay home and lie down. <laughs> well, when you have people around you and then they start talking, uh, talking, talking loud, uh, that's a guarantee you're gonna get it. If fish come in, he ain't gonna bite it. Cause too many people talking, talking. So that's why every time when you go fishing like that. You never say nothing, don't talk nothing. You go on the beach, don't say nothing. I go with my dad, I don't say nothing. I just sit there and then just watch. You're really working, you know what I mean? It's not like you're throwing your pole in and, and you're just holding your pole and waiting for the fish bite. You're really putting in a day's work over there, just pounding and pounding and pounding. Saw the back, saw this, saw that. You gotta stand and walk around and, you know, and I mean, pole fishing, you just throw the line in, stick them in a pole holder and you just wait. You know, you're not working or anything. 
not like the when you're doing ulua fishing. When Ben and Aku were young, it was mainly Kalapana folks who fished in the area. But today, many outsiders come to fish, and they often come with a different attitude. Nowadays, I mean, I notice, you know, people, you know, I mean, local people, they come from all, you know, all over. But you can see the greed in them. They, they like to take everything. They don't like leave for the next Hawaiian or whoever come to take, you know. They like to take all one time. You don't have to take all. If you like take all, then you're not going to have nothing for nobody. And then when you yourself, like, you come back, oh, oh, no more nothing. Oh, because you didn't take them all. The main Hawaiian ulua stock appears to be under a lot of fishing pressure, and marine biologists fear the population may be in serious decline. The state does not collect any statistical data on the subsistence and recreational catches of ulua. Nowadays, there's a lot of people that fish ulua, um, not only in where we go, but kind of like all around the whole island, and it seems like the ulua are getting scarce. And they just like catch them and release them. And as, uh, when they do that, it's the same thing like Uncle Ben said, when people, it's like, you know, they're not catching them to eat them, they're just catching them just for fun. But then the people who really want to catch them to eat them, the fish don't bite already. It's like he said, it's out already, already when bite hook one time already, and then they're not going to bite hook anymore. And there's a lot of people that do sly bait and uh, flag line. And so there's a lot of competition nowadays in catching ulua. We were never able to film Ben and Aku catching an ulua, although we went out to seven different locations for a total of 17 days over a five-year time span. Well, it was just pretty sad, this last one. All those days out there, spent some hours out there. The thing is, depends on the current. Of course, we use a lot, but the thing is, the current, uh, was it too good? Uh, mm -hmm. That's my opinion. See. I guess back in the old days, uh, when when you go out fishing, you know they had all these different things that when you point, you know, the, it's no good when you point at the fish. The fish run away, and I think you know with the cameras that we took every spot we went, the different areas, we had a cameras pointing right at the hook, waiting for the fish to bite, and um. I think that's why um, we never catch anything. Ironically, Ben and Aku caught a small ulua on the first trip before our cameras were set up. We just kind of set up our stick and everything, and I just told Uncle, oh, maybe if we set up our stick before the camera come, maybe we hook up. <laughs> and after that, we wanted to stay there longer. But then uh, that's the only one we had, but we're happy with what we got. The cultural value of only taking what you need is an important way to conserve the fishery for future generations. You catch what you want, one, two, then go home all right. Then when you get home, you clean your fish, everything, salt it and put it away. Then you eat. You only keep so much for you and your family, then the rest, Share, give to the neighbor. That's what I do. I share to the neighbors like that. Bring them down. Say, hey, hey so I get something for you for dinner. Fish. Clean your home. <laughs> so the more you share, the more you get. That's my opinion. The teaching style Aku uses to teach his children to fish is by example. Explanations are not necessary if one observes carefully. Well, for me, it's mostly I watch. That's how I learn. You know, I, I never, you know, really ask that much questions, you know. They, they used to say, you know, talk, you watch. You, know, you, you watch and learn, yeah. And then maybe sometimes maybe you could ask because uh, a lot of times if you talk too much, they don't like when you talk too much. <laughs> and say, coolie, coolie. 
Yeah, you know, I learned a lot um, on the, this ulua fishing, uh, from catching puhi to setting up the line. Yeah, he, he can do pretty much everything or anything. I mean, I like the way kids come along. Back in the old days, they never liked kids come. But to me, I just like my kids learn what, you know, my, my, my dad showed me. So, you know, I figured, you know, even, even the girls, you know, I like bring them along. I mean, it, in the years to come, they're going to have kids and, you know, their husband might not know what, what, you know, what's what. And they can show the kids what, you know, their father used to do. So to me, no matter, and my small girl, Mahia, she, she like learn, she like do stuff. It's good for them to, to learn all this where in the years to come, nobody gonna know about this kind of stuff. And if they ever thought of talking about it, people go, hey, where you heard that from? You know, oh yeah, my father, I remember when I was young, he used to tell us this kind of stuff like that. Mahalo, mahalo. Oh, sorry, yeah. um, you notice that um, when we died of the the died of, um, the rope, we ended up stretching them, and that's why uh, when you stretch the rope, the the rope no tangle. That's why we're doing that. And uh, because if you get any other rope and you you wind them up like that, the thing just all intertwine. But when we when we stick them inside a kukui knot. And then we stretch them like that, the thing just stay real tight. So when you coil them, it's real clean. And that's why we did that. That's why we stretch them every time we, um, uh, we dye them. And I forget one other thing. Um, you know our hooks, when we tie the hooks? Um, you notice my knot over here on this one here. Um, we're going to put the, the tension on the eye of the hook. You notice the thing stay wrapped on the shank. So um, it, it's going to pull a shank instead of the eye. And you can give a like, double or triple wrap on the shank. And then, uh, and I just use bowling. You know, everybody says, that's for Thai horse, but hey, I tie horse, I tie any kind, but bowling is like one mean knot that. And so that's what I use is bowling. And he worked. So um, I, I just like to tell you guys one story. You know, my dad, you know, before he go fishing one time by himself, and this was up Kapa'ahu. And, uh, and he went down there he, by himself, he set up all the pool and everything, and, and he was still young back then. And he would fish all day, Pao Palo, everything. And uh, when, when, when come in the evening time, he was ready to go home. So he said he was ready to take out his stick. So he, lift the stick up and everything ready for, for, for take the stick out and oh you know Kalapana get plenty of wine there down there in the bushes walking around <laughs> back in the old days you know and somebody went whistle and when he turned the stick went down and we catch my dad by the pants and he had his pants on 
And so instead of falling down on the rocks down below the cliff, you can dive in the ocean. And uh, wow, and he never knew the Lord back then. And he said, with all the charm that he put in the water the whole day, <laughs> guess what he was thinking about? Not Ulua. <laughs> was the shark he was thinking about. And the first thing he said, I said, sweet Jesus, please help me. And he said he didn't swim around. He had to take his pants off. If not, he was going to drown. And then he, the stick was there. And he took the stick and he swam one mile down the coastline. And he remember his daddy used to tell him when he was young, the seventh wave, the seventh wave. And so he came inside, he said he had a hard time seeing, but he, he could only live, see the top of the coconut trees. And he knew he was coming into Kup, uh, Kupahua, the name of his place was Kupahua. And there was another place, kind of <coughs> easy to go in. And so he came in close to the rocks and he felt the surge going up and down, up and down, and he counted them. And then on the seventh one, he listened and, uh, Never had surge inside, so he came more close. And so the second time he waited, and then he would count seven, and he came inside, and he said the wave and put him all the way in. And when he climbed up, he's like, oh, he said, I kneeled down on the ground, and I said, I thank you, sweet Jesus. But then, you know, back in the old days, when you get home, your father and mother, are like, what you ask? Oh, leakings on top of that. <laughs> you was going to die down in the ocean. You come home, you get leakings, yeah. <laughs>